I'm Neil and welcome to Dreaming of Chess Mastery, my YouTube channel that examines the world of adult chess improvement. I've just finished reading Jan Marcus's book, Under the Surface. And my goodness, it is an astonishingly fascinating, fantastic book. I'm obviously going to have to read it again, actually read it again and again, because it's one of those books that has depths of thinking um, and you sort of unpeel layers. And I'm going to talk a, sort of around this theme, uh, looking specifically at something, uh, an idea that he addressed in the last chapter, which is beauty in chess. Um, and I think when we think about why we want to improve at chess, improve our understanding. One reason is obviously uh, to become a better, stronger player, to win more games, a sort of, uh, in essence, an ego-driven thing, and a, comp a competitive thing. But I think a critical idea is this idea of beauty. Um, and the more we dive into chess, the better we understand the game the more we begin to see in it. And uh, I would like to say, not that that will give us more pleasure, but it will enhance the pleasure we get out of chess. Um, so here goes. A few thoughts uh, provoked by the topic of beauty uh, in Under the Surface. He takes a very novel approach where he surveyed um, a number of amateur players, probably, I think it was in the region of 150 or so, and, and he asked them a range of questions to see, see what they thought. And two really stood out for me. The one was the idea that, um, and I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but that grandmasters play more beautiful games than amateur players, expert players who play more beautiful games than beginners. And, and these are comments that the format of his survey was uh, agree or disagree with the statement. And intriguingly, about 45% of uh, his questioned amateur chess players agreed with that, and around 55% disagreed. Uh, and then there was another fairly controversial question, um, I guess a little bit more pointed, a little bit more one that will uh, uh, elicit controversy. And that was that uh, grandmasters are better able, essentially, to discern what is beautiful or strong players, expert players. Um, in essence, that there, there are authorities who can tell us what is beautiful. Um, and they are right and we are wrong, in a, in, in a sense. And I can't remember again exactly how he'd phrased it. Um, I'm not going to make this a sort of reading lesson. But that's the gist of it. And only 15% of his readers or, or his returners agreed with that. And that, I think, points to a much deeper idea. And it was an interesting idea for me because my day job, as it were, is uh, I'm a sculptor. Um, and this is certainly something that I run across, this idea that, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, I know what I like. And, and I think that is very much the problem there. People don't like being told when it comes to something that is so deeply personal. And of course, um, I do know what I like. Uh, and if I say I find something beaut beautiful, um, whether it's uh, a game of chess or a piece of art or a meal in a restaurant, whatever it is, 
The statement that I found it beautiful it goes beyond any dispute. Um, and we feel somewhat indignant that uh, someone can say, well, it's not really that beautiful. This is more beautiful. Or this is a tastier meal. Or a better flavour. Or a more beautiful object. Um, and if you find that thing to be beautiful, it's in some sense a statement about uh, your abilities of discernment, your qualities. Um, and we don't like being criticised there about something that is, in essence, deeply personal. I think right now, um, in our modern age, this sort of dichotomy brought out by those two questions that Jan Marcus explored uh, has become um, heightened. Because obviously uh, the internet and our, our digital age, the democratization of uh, ideas about beauty, uh, have heightened that kind of argument. But I'm very much, probably not surprisingly, on the side that he takes. I mean, and let's think about it logically. Someone who just begins playing chess doesn't start out saying, that's beautiful. And, and, and we would almost laugh at them if they did. They might say, how interesting, how fascinating, how intriguing. But at the very beginning of your chess journey, you are simply unable to even conceive that chess is a beautiful thing. It's a game. And there's a certain point where suddenly the sort of scales fall from your eyes and you start seeing this hidden beauty that, uh, and, and uh, quite deliberately, excuse the pun, that lies under the surface. Because you start understanding the thinking behind a move. The, the, the great uh, chess theoretician and immensely strong player in his time, Aaron Nimzovich, um, famously said, uh, when criticised about the ugliness of his moves, which were deeply challenging to the way people thought at the time, he said, um, beauty doesn't lie, I guess I'm paraphrasing, beauty doesn't lie in the outward appearance, it lies in the thought behind the move. And to me, this is eminently reasonable and, and quite obvious, frankly. Um, so as you deepen your understanding of chess, you start peeling away layers of, uh, of um, I guess, uh, layers of confusion that obscure your understanding of what is beautiful in chess. Um, as, a, as a visual artist, there's a, uh, and in particular in the art that I produce, which is uh, wire sculptures, essentially, um, drawings in space. Uh, and there's a comment about drawing that learning to draw is a learning to see. And I think it's very true. I mean, I certainly find this in my sculpture. The more I develop my abilities as a sculptor, the more I see things differently. Uh, I, I mean, I really do. I'm uh, my sort of long-term project in sculpture is is based around a, a sort of reinterpretation of Michelangelo's Statue of David. And the more I look at this work, which is uh, a work be almost beyond compare, an astonishing uh, uh, sculpture, the more I look at it, the more I see. Um, the more... I become open to new, hidden depths uh, of beauty. I can remember as a chess player, uh, growing up, um, a book, and I've mentioned it before, 
that, that was probably the first that really opened my eyes to the possibility of beauty in chess. This book called The World of Chess by uh, co-authored by Norman Lessing and Anthony Sadie. Norman Lessing was a coffee house player and Anthony Sadie uh, an international master. And it was a fantastic book. And um, I remember reading, and I took it out dozens of times from our local library. Um, I never found it at the time. I never found a copy, um, not a new one, not a, a second-hand copy. Well, this was Port Elizabeth, South Africa, so that wasn't really a surprise. So I was reliant on the copy in the library, and it, and it almost became my own. I remember seeing a game between Ratty and Bogolubov, pardon my pronunciation, uh, and Ratty won in 26 moves and his final 25 or 26 moves his final move was um, an absolutely wonderful uh, interference move with his bishop that um, kind of cut across uh, Black's defensive possibilities I'll, I'll attach a, a number of links I think to this video and one of will, will be to a, a blog I've written about this game uh, and it's an incredibly beautiful move um, it's a simple move actually uh, simple of course that's not to say that I would have played it but it's simple to understand and uh, 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 it's a sort of pristine clarity in, in the beauty of this move what under the surface gives you are glimpses into the thinking of a grand master. Um, for that reason, in the, uh, the sort of introductory comments, the, the dust jacket, uh, complimentary comments to the book, one is by David Navarra, an, an incredibly strong um, modern grand master, Czech grand master. Uh, and, and he points out that this book will be of great interest to grand masters, not just uh, amateurs. It's not an, particularly an instructional book, although there is an immense amount of instruction in it. Uh, and I think the interest for a grand master hints at this point that, that these are layers of thinking of ideas. And so for... For an amateur like me, this is a book that will require reading and rereading and reading again. As uh, my understanding increases, um, the wisdom and beauty contained in the book will become apparent on ever deeper levels. And I think that's the point about beauty in chess. Um, and, and that's why, quite simply, uh, my games, to, I might play a, a pretty move on occasions, but it's pretty on, uh, in a different way to the, the beauty contained in a top player's move. And um, what I find beautiful now may eventually dull a little. Uh, and if I, I think of comments of a great art theoretician, Herbert Reed. Um, that's how he described art. Art is an uh, object for profound con contemplation over time. So a, a beautiful chess game is not, or a beautiful chess idea, it's not something that we will exhaust. We'll keep coming back to the game or move and seeing it in new ways. And in fact, as chess thinking evolves, so too will the beauty of the move. Um, I'm going to revisit this book a lot, there's no doubt about that. But I guess that's an, enough for today. Um, I'll leave lots of um, suitable links in the description below. As always, I'd love to know what you think, so feel free to comment. Um, and until next week, Keep on enjoying your chess or whatever it is that you're doing. Because I know some of you aren't chess players, strangely enough. 
for listening, watching this vlog. So until next week, 